Our Tarnish walks the path of Elden Lord alone, save for Torrent and Melina. We may find companions in Tarnish like Rogier and Roderica, but ultimately, the only help we receive is indirect, through the kindness shown by our confidants, or the exchange of runes for various goods. While we may summon cooperators, no one walks this path alongside us. However, that was not always meant to be the case. While we try to stay away from discussing cut content as if it should be taken as true lore, there's one quest that fleshes out a significant character we only get to see in the final game when we fight them, or when we summon them to fight at our side. Today, we are going to discuss Asimi, the Silver Tear, or as most of us know her, the Mimic Tear. Before we get into this cut story and the lore surrounding the Mimic Tear, we wanted to take a second and ask you to subscribe to the channel. Here at Square Table Gaming, we work hard to make sure we are always engaging with our community, creating content we think you'd want to see. We have loved every second of working on the Elden Lore series, and can't thank you enough for your continued support. Whether you're a longtime subscriber or just found us today, thank you. You are why we do this. Now let's discuss the purpose of the Silver Tear. Upon making our way to Noxtella, the Eternal City, we can do battle with these formless blobs of silver that attack by creating shard weapons made from their own silver bodies. These are known as the Silver Tears. The story of these creatures begins with the Nox, the denizens of the Eternal Cities. Their armor tells us, long ago the Nox invoked the ire of the Greater Will and were banished deep underground. Now they live under a false night sky in eternal anticipation of their liege of the coming age of the stars, and their lord of night. The Nox carry the Nox Flaming Sword, a grim weapon wielded by the swordsmen of the Eternal City. This shotel has a blade as fine as a needle. Forged from the liquid metal of a silver tear, it is thoroughly tempered until hardened. Here is where we saw the first use for the Silver Tears. Originally, they were a simple metal, a resource of the Eternal City discovered after they were driven underground. However, over time, the Nox came to understand that the Tears were more than a resource. They had the potential to form a new life. The Silver Tears we encounter are experiments of the Nox, an attempt at creating life. They drop their husks, which are described as hardened husks shed by a formless life form known as the Silver Tear, found in and around the Eternal City. The Silver Tear makes mockery of life, reborn again and again into imitation. Perhaps one day, it will be reborn a lord. This is a curious idea. Why would these formless creatures even have a chance of becoming a lord? We find out in Nakron when we come across a tear with an interesting ability, it can create an exact copy of our tarnished. This spirit takes the form of the summoner to fight alongside them, but its mimicry does not extend to imitating the summoner's will. Mimic tears are the result of an attempt by the Eternal City to forge a lord. With the knowledge that the Nox were waiting for the Age of the Stars and their Lord of Night, we can safely assume they were the ones to experiment on the Silver Tears until they created a form of life with the ability to mimic those with the potential to become a lord. This is seen not only with the Mimic Tear, but also with two random Silver Tears that take humanoid shape when fighting them on the rooftops. There's also a stray Mimic Tear that can be found on our way to the Halic Tree, which shows that these creatures have their own will. For whatever reason, this Mimic Tear found its way far from the Eternal Cities and made camp at the end of a dungeon, protecting a piece of Deathroot. This is a fairly cut and dry explanation of the Silver Tears and the Mimic Tears. Where things get interesting is the cut quest concerning a particular tier named Asimi. As far as we can tell, this cut quest was found by Reddit user MetaKetoWeta. Before talking through the quest and its implications, we wanted to credit this discovery. From the dialogue uncovered, it seems as though Asimi was a Silver Tear we would have encountered somewhere in the lands between, but likely not in either of the Eternal Cities. Asimi asks you to spare her life, as she has grown intelligent. She can speak, ponder, even fears death. She offers our tarnished power if we breathe her in and take her inside us, carrying her along as a companion in our journey. We believe that our tarnished would have met her above ground because a piece of her dialogue has her calling out the sound of running water, the sound of her home, and she asks us to take her to the Eternal City. It's at this point that the flattery starts. Asimi starts referring to us as a good lord host, and she begins to tell us she is parched, thirsty for the chalice that resides somewhere in her homeland. She promises us additional power if we drink the liquid from the chalice in order for us to become a perfect whole. This implies that the chalices will somehow fuse us so that we are no longer a vessel, but two beings existing as one. After drinking the chalice, she informs us that another exists in the other Eternal City, and we must seek it out as well. 
after we drink from this second chalice, it is implied that there would be some kind of a cutscene showing our Tarnished passing out or falling asleep. From here, there is some kind of a falling out between our Tarnished and Asimi. Ah, are you awake? We've become a perfect whole. There is nothing to fear. I will merely follow in your footsteps, living only as you would have yourself, and I vow that I will perfect your form. Ah, how could you? I was you and only you. We were one, together. Please, I only want to live. I only wanted you to become Lord. While this dialogue implies we may then kill Asimi, we believe it is more likely there is some kind of response we could have made to their statement that caused this verbal falling out, as there is more quest dialogue that seems to take place sometime later. Once we find her, Asimi tells us she wishes we didn't, and you could have become Elden Lord and I could have become Sovereign Eternal eventually. This then leads to our final confrontation with the Mimic Tear. For additional context, this character showed as an item in your inventory after taking them into your body, where their description read, An Asimi that has infected a Tarnished, an intelligent silver sludge. Asimi infect the body of Tarnish, granting the host power. Also, Melina had unique dialogue that would trigger if you visited a site of grace after allowing Asimi to hitch a ride. Is there another person inside of you? Did you want that to happen? I sense no malice. Do as you think best. Hello, other you. I am Melina, and I have an accord for this person. We might be together for some time. Pleased to meet you. For us, this conversation with Melina solidifies our eventual confrontation with Asimi as a tragedy. Asimi's dialogue could come across as very suspect. The mimic tier assures us that she means us no harm, but comes across as a parasitic organism. The item description describing her as an infection would lead you to believe she has only her own interests in mind. However, Melina senses no malice in her. With this in mind, it seems as though Asimi was true to her word when she told us we could both serve as Lord. If she, like the mimic tier we meet in the final version of the game, was created by the Nox to be the Elden Lord, then it's natural that she'd want the throne, but she says clearly that she wants us to have it during our lifetime. Presumably, Asimi sees our relationship as more symbiotic than anything else. She lends us her strength as a summonable ally, and once we have taken the throne, had our time as Elden Lord, and died of natural causes, she could then step in, wearing our face, our form, and reign as an eternal sovereign. We double our strength and get to take the throne. Asimi takes over after our death, a win-win for both parties involved. It's unclear why the quest must end with a final battle against Asimi, and without additional context we'll likely never know, but it's a shame such an interesting character was scaled back so far as to become nothing more than a repeatable boss fight and a powerful summon. Knowing Asimi's story also adds a new context to the Mimic tier we find in the final game. When we summon this Ash to help us in battle, it doesn't require us to use our magic. We instead sacrifice health in order to call upon them. Originally, we believed this was a way to allow all players the opportunity to have the Mimic tier fight alongside them, even if they went full Oonga Boonga. But with the knowledge that the tier originally came not from the Spirit Caller's bell, but from inside our tarnished body, this makes much more sense. We have to sacrifice a piece of ourselves in order to give the Mimic Tear form, a symbiotic relationship, much like we would have seen if we were able to experience a Simi story. So what do you think of the cut Mimic Tear storyline? There's a lot of speculation about the greater implications of Asimi, the way she speaks and her reference to her union is making us whole. Some even believe this could somehow recontextualize the relationship between Merica and Radagon. But given that it will likely never be canon in-game, we shy away from that idea. Like, comment, and subscribe with your thoughts on the Silver Tears and the Mimic Tears. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.